And it's all because of that Meccano set. All right, Jack, why are, we, uh, why are we back at the plane? Well, this morning, yes. we went for a drive. Ant and I went for a drive. And we had the youngest with us, Lyra, because the other two girls had school of the air today. And so to make life a little bit easier for Jasmine, we thought we'll take Lyra for a drive. She likes coming out with us. So she came with us, but the road's a bit too wet. It certainly was, Jack. And we, we didn't get bogged. We did not. We were just temporarily immobile. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But we also had that thunderstorm last night. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, that came out of nowhere. That wasn't forecast. It wasn't on anything. You know, there was nothing to suggest that we were going to get a, for, uh, a thunderstorm. Yeah. And uh, we ended up with 6.6 .6 mils out of that. It wasn't meant to hit here, but again, there's not enough data collection points and not enough real time or consistent data for this region. So all the forecasts out here are actually based off the accuracy of models that have been ground truthed. Because there's no weather stations out this far. No, so you've got the station weather stations, which are a manual recording. Yeah. So that relies on people, well, relies on people checking it. Mm -hmm and making sure that they are accurate with their measurements. And I realized that we haven't actually shown you how we check the official rain gauge. Every time there's a rainfall event, we need to input the data to BOM, so the Bureau of Meteorology for Australia, so that they can update and get a good record of the rainfall. And that's how our rainfall statistics here are done, manually. The electric rain gauge we have isn't accurate enough we have considered asking Bureau of Meteorology to put in an electric one because there's a massive area here that is a blind spot. The nearest daily obs come from Carnegie, as we saw from Brendan, but theirs is manual as well. You'd think with the awesome technology and connectivity we have today, we could put in highly accurate weather stations so that we could get a better idea of the climate patterns and any changes to that environment that we've got. So, I'm going to break out our, uh, our advanced technology and I'll show you our rain gauge. So it's got a station identification number for the tin. And you always make sure that you don't have too many geckos or spiders. And you hold it steady. Looks like we are somewhere around 6.6 .6 mils. As Ant likes to say, good enough for government work. Radio, let's get ready for the day. What are you looking at here, Jack? Uh, I'm dipping the fuel to see if we need to add any for today's flight. With a stick? With a stick, because a stick will stain. Okay. So when you put your fuel in, you can see the level. So that's the other side. This is this side. Mm -hmm. I can go, that's one finger's worth. Check mm -hmm. the same point. We've got 25 litres. So we've got 50 litres on board. How far will that get us, Jack? Well, it's not so much how far, it's how long. <laughs> so <laughs> how long can we stay airborne? With 50 litres, two and a half hours. That should be enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends how much um, how much extra flying around we want to Jack, do. That's that's when you go. Yes, Ant. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we've got ten liters out there, so we've got three hours of fuel. Oh, so, so good. I'll put my stopwatch on. Yeah. Well, I have a stopwatch, mm -hmm. and I set the timer every time we go for a flight. Okay. So I can tell 
which tank I should be on and how much burn we've had. We brought Lyra back home and so now we're going the alternate yes. insertion. Uh, and the purpose of this was to go out to one of our water points pack horse yes. to repair a small issue with the wireless monitoring unit. And Ant's got it all packed away in a ammo tin, yep. which is everything we need to fix it, plus a little bit more. Yep. And we'll get out there and switch it over. Yeah, so it'll be good to get that up and live again. And you know, it's not a huge concern because there is so much water around but we want to have access, the video access, which puts our virtual boots on the ground and lets us have a look at who's coming in, how often, and what's going on really. So right. there might be a feral cat there, Ant. Right, well, I'll yell at it because we're not carrying any firearms in the plane, Jack. There's not enough room today. Not today. We've got to take the doors off for that. <laughs> and it's just a little bit cold. <laughs> Rightio, let's get on with it. Rightio. This is how Jack takes his plane out of the hangar. I think it's um, <clears throat> just reinforces my thought that it's not really a plane. It's, it, it really is a, a motorised kite. Um, there's not much to it. How much does that thing weigh, Jack? 300. 300 kilograms? Yes. Wow. That's not a lot, is it? We're not expecting any thermals or birds. Well, they're birds, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we saw some ducks this morning. Yeah, they don't fly that high, do they? Well, they do. It's the wedge tails that eat the ducks. Right. That we've got to look out for. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Let's uh, go to pack horse. Roger. Once again, we are in the motorised kite. Well, actually, I don't have a license for a motorised kite. Uh, uh, so long as you know how to fly it, Jack, I don't care what you have a license for. What is it? The par powered parachutes, the other one? Yeah. Let's not worry about it. Not flying that high, Jacker. It's good to have that back up. It is. It's um one of those things that Dad and I, when we're looking at different types of planes, and you get Sports Pilot magazine. Yeah. And you see an aeroplane, and it's advertised as having a ballistic parachute. Okay. So a ballistic parachute. It's just up in the um, luggage compartment there. Right. Oh, and it actually deploys when for the plane as a whole. Yep. Yep. Yeah, when it when it hits the fan. Yep. Now, why didn't you get one of those, Jack? Because this plane is so reliable. Oh my God. <laughs> that's that's our our uh, our logic is you know uh, if if a plane needs to have its own parachute. Yeah. You've got a problem. Right. How, how about? <laughs> How about I sponsor? <laughs> How about I subsidise it? But you can also put this down on um, most of our tracks, as you've noticed, they're nice and wide. Yes. Right then. See, there's your birds. Yeah, they can... Oh. Yeah, okay, we don't like them. Alright, I'm going to um, taxi down the strip, just towards where those uh, plubbers have landed. Right. And then um, I'll wheel us around and taxi, uh, you know, take us for a launch that way. Okay. And feel it giving us a little bit of a push around. Well, Jack, it is only 300 kilos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is, you know, designed to fly. So when it gets the wind, it, you know, gets excited. Yeah. We probably added, added to that weight a little bit. So you're a little bit... You know, reluctant to share uh, with the potential governesses the... Uh... <laughs> yes, no, that's a trade secret. Now, you're good to go? Yeah, good to go. Oh, it dipped a little bit towards your side for some reason. Yeah, yeah. funny that. Yeah. There's 
is a homestead over there. I'm going to turn into the wind to maximise our lift. Right. And that's the road that we headed out on today. No. <laughs> right. That's the road. It's we good. It's good. It's good. I've. Uh, it's good. I've got my. Your bearings. <laughs> <laughs> My familiarisation is complete. Yeah, you are good to go. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to send you out on your own. <laughs> All right, so that clearing down at 2 o'clock low next to the creek on your side. Yeah. But this side of the creek or the other side? This side of the creek. Yeah. And a little bit hard to see, but can you see a bit of a tripod? Like yeah, I can. I can. And a bucket? I can. Now, we don't quite know the history of it, but that's a well. Wow. And the bucket there still has dirt in it from when they were digging the well. Wow. So the only thing you can sort of assume is that it was a pretty dry year and they've gone to dig the well to get some water and then it's rained and they gave up. Yeah, right. Now that's a little piece of history we're going to explore later on. We'll probably okay. take the posty bike out here. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, have a have a look, climb down into it, um, and see what you can find down the bottom. Hopefully, we're not going to find a skeleton of Joe who dug it. Right. But we'll uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> All right. So yeah. we're cruising over, and we're near a freshwater part of Lake Carnegie, and we can see twelve camels. They're on the move now. They're yeah. heading towards the west. Now, Hang on, Jack. I've lost them. Where are they? It's OK. We'll get ready for a bit of a low uh, pass. OK. And I'll put them on your side. OK. So we're going to be over the water and we'll go in on, on them. Now, Anthony was just talking to me and asking if at this altitude the camels will run away. And I said that I didn't think that they would, that they would look at us. However, these camels have proven me wrong. <laughs> yeah. And Ant didn't want to have the doors off because it's a bit Too chilly. Too cold. But I think he's now wishing that he had something other than a camera to shoot those camels with. Yeah, I do. I do indeed. All right, I've got them on my nose. Oh yeah, now I've got him, Jack. Now I've got him. Yeah, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They're on the move. And uh, while we're talking about wildlife and It'll be difficult for the camera to see it, but on my side I can see six black swans. Wow. Six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten on my side, and we've got two, four, six, eight, ten on your side, just near that estuary. Oh, oh yeah. Got yeah. a good number of swans. And a good amount of water, Jack. Uh, this is just the, the lake coming to life with that water. Yeah, I mean, that is extraordinary. It's just, yeah, amazing. And so, in a few weeks, this, well, the area that's to our north of the boundary line is going to be part of the Lake Carnegie Nature Reserve. Okay. This is a new development, Jack? Yes, yes it is. Okay, and so if it's a nature reserve, what does that mean? Uh, it's a protected area, and so it's not a tourist destination. It's for conservation only. Okay. So conservation and heritage, because Lake Carnegie has a deep and strong connection for the Mardu people, so the traditional people of this area. I guess I should sort of stop referring to it as a crash cam. A crash cam? <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, it's good to, you know, have it there for the, the posterity. So there's the well over there. You just keep flying. Jack, I'll do the talking. Um, and then 
Here is the airstrip over here. Yeah, this one's not as close as I'd like it to be because um, you've got to walk a little bit. Yeah, just land on it, will you? Do you want me to? Be good oh, if you want. okay, yeah, 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 no, no. I thought you wanted me to get it on the ground quicker. Kind of like this. <laughs> right. Does that runway keep going? It goes for a, like a, a good amount, but we're just going to get down to where the grader was. Okay. And we'll turn around, and then we'll uh, taxi. Go, we'll taxi down the airstrip. Awesome. Okay. And that uh, was a good landing in a crosswind, Jack. Oh, it, look, it's um. I, I've, I've, I haven't had a smooth landing as that on most international flights. Well, you know, most uh, international pilots don't have a, the same crash record. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, one, one pilot did say to me that, you know, you're not a real pilot until you've crashed. <laughs> right. That wouldn't have been your dad, would it? No, he's the one that says there's no better pilot to fly with than someone that has crashed. Right. And he's a better pilot than I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we just landed on with this and him. Rightio Jack, so we, we've walked what, a couple hundred metres from the plane and what do you got in your hand? Water. We don't go anywhere without water. And I've got our box of tricks. The box of tricks? Yep. So okay. everything we need to fix this yep. and you'll find, or you'll come to find that most of our maintenance and repair stuff can actually fit in the ammo tin and that's, you know, fours, the um, monitoring units. Rightio, so we're at, what's the, we're at Pack Horse, are we? We are at Pack Horse. Right, so now, that's your, that's your yard over there and here's your your solar panel that's running your what your 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 water electric water pump yep so the dual panels our our solar bore yep. which is under the old windmill and the single panel there is our wi-fi okay and the old windmill has been repurposed to um have the long range point to point antenna on it okay so hang on this is good this is good so before this windmill was an actual windmill that was driving a water pump up and down that was feeding the the well so yep. the cattle that, that well there so the cattle could drink and so you've changed the model such that what well <clears throat> you used to have the windmill yep and it would pump into the squatter tank yep and then we've got a couple generations here. We've got the first gen, which is the outside one that's rusted. Then they put another one in there that's smaller. Yep. And it's interesting to think about the evolution of the water tank in the outback. And you go when it was horseback days and it would take you, you know, a, a good 14 days to do a big mill run. Now the furthest water point on this place is 120 k's, which is wow. a good effort, you know, on, on horseback. Yep. Then you go to the motor car, and so they weren't as reliable, they weren't as quick as they are today, nor were the tracks as good. They were trails back then. And so you had a tank that was big enough that if something went wrong, it would hold enough water for that period of time between checking it and getting back there. Okay. So it had a reserve. Yep. And nowadays, we've gone to a smaller tank because we can check it quicker. We can check every day if we wanted to. Yep. And in summer, and when it's very like testing times, we are checking it all the time. Okay. But now, we've got the cameras. And we can check it nighttime, daytime, first thing in the morning before a coffee. Okay, where's your camera? So the camera is way up the top, right up uh, just below the, the stand. Oh yeah, I can see it. Hang on, hang on. 
So yeah, okay. So you can see the camera up there, and then the the George Jetson radar dish at the top there is for what? That is our communications. Yeah. That's our. Please our, explain. That's our five gigahertz network. This George Jetson radar thing is pointing to where? That's pointing up to Gallipoli Repeater. Yeah. Which is north of Bullock, so that is. 22 kilometers from here yeah and then it goes from gallipoli to courtney courtney to virgins and virgins to the house and that's a one-way signal back to the homestead from where you've got your internet and whatever so you can look on your phone and and see what's happening from anywhere it's two-way because oh, it out, two out here we can take our wi-fi calls we jump on the wi-fi it's actually good enough that if I had a laptop that was capable, I could be playing Call of Duty online. And the additional latency that I have from here back to the homestead, okay, it's somewhere around 18 milliseconds, yep. which, you know, those competitive gamers do realize. But when you're talking that you're in the middle of nowhere, a long way from anything, and there's no other infrastructure at all out here for communications, and we've built our own thing, I'm pretty happy with it. So basically what you're saying, Jack, is I can come out here and, and watch Thursday night footy on, on, on Foxtel or KO Sports. That, that's, yeah, that's correct. I like it. We're using Starlink and the MBN as our uplink to the satellite because there's no other infrastructure. There's no cable, there's no fibre, there is nothing that comes out here. It is completely without being connected to the net, it's off grid. We make our own power, we get our own water, we deal with everything ourselves. And now we've got our own e network that then connects up to the satellite, which is the only way of getting any communication out here. Yep. And that's now getting spread out to these points. From anywhere in the world where you have an internet connection, if you go on holidays and so you're there and you say, look, I might just check on the pack horse water point you can get on your mobile phone in the Japanese ski resort and you can see live what's happening here. Yes. And it's solar powered. Yes, solar powered network. Jack, you are a genius, mate. <laughs> I, I, I stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> right. <laughs> here we have Jack who is now fixing something. Aren't you, Jack? Yeah. Right. So this is his box of tricks. And this is the box. Yeah, the magic box, which it'll cost you a decent amount of money to um, actually see what's in here. Okay, I'm just filming it. Yeah, that's all right. We'll, we'll People just... won't understand, Jack. Uh, no, no, actually, surprisingly, yeah. there are some companies which really want to know how we're doing this. Right, well, we'll just close the door and so they can't see. So I'm just going to film the back of the door, Jack. This is Jack's secret box that he's fixing all the equipment with. Can you tell anyone what's going on in there, Jack? Um, I can. But you'd have to cut the head off and put it in the safe? No, I'd have to charge. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, don't let them see that. Right. Oh, what about this thing over here, Jack? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a um, standard... Are they allowed to see that? Yeah, you can, you can have a look at that. That's okay. okay. All right. Do you want me to run everyone through what this is, Jack? Well, we've gone over that before oh my um, God. in earlier videos. Oh, okay, then I'm not going to worry about it. That's good, because I didn't want to bore everyone with, with that. There are people who are charging for um, this type of equipment. Well, actually, not this type of equipment. A service that's similar to this, the but in every way, and in my humble opinion, inferior. Because they rely on simple things like maybe one photo or two photos a day. Yep. And uh, telling you if the tank is full or not. Yep. A couple of times a day. Where we've got live stream video internet that you can stream videos you know movies and games and upload something to youtube from and the cost like this has no ongoing cost aside from your connection to the internet and a bit of maintenance here and there a lot of other systems that exist 
and uh, let's say available on the market today, charge you per day. Oh, like a subscription a model. A subscription model. And you've also got paying for all of the hardware up front. Now, the advantage we have is I know how to install it, how to configure it, and how to put it all together. Yep. So that cuts down the price on, say, travel. Yep. We've also spent somewhere around the $100,000 mark in developing what we've got. Yep. So we're not exactly going to just give it away because... Was it, was it sponsored at all or funded or...? The comment on that would be it was not seen to be technically feasible. Right. right. Well, we've put an end to that. No, they still don't believe that it works. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Yep, it's... Um, well, I've no, seen it with my own eyes, Jack. So the rest of the doubting Thomases, they can, they can keep on... Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. No, we have done this all by ourselves. Uh, this is completely and utterly self-funded. That's uh, awesome. This development, it's been at our own cost. And there are people that want to copy it for free and sell it to other people with no return on our behalf. It is a little frustrating to see that. Most people you know, are perfectly capable of doing this. I am absolutely not the first to have done this. Some people might claim that it, you know, we're, we're achieving this because of you know, my history and experience in communications with a, a small national group uh, or my background in precision agriculture but most of this actually comes from school that's been a good school jack yes yep yep and fiddling with computers um from about 11 years old yeah and yeah just fiddling with all of that stuff playing with off-grid electricity building stuff you breaking just, stuff yep yeah. you've just got a in, an inquisitive mind jack I like playing yep. and you know I guess you could you know maybe give some of the people the benefit of the doubt because every time I've been told no something can't be done I set about all of my energy to proving that no it can be done and I don't like people that shut down ideas without entertaining them yeah yeah you know, don't yeah. don't don't stop someone from trying something because you believe it can't be done. Yeah. yeah. You've, got to, <laughs> you've yeah. got to let people have a go. Yeah. Otherwise, nothing's ever going to change. Takes a lot to pull it back. Right, I'm getting bitten to death here. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm sorry about that. I'm okay. just... Um, Is it working? Look, I'm just trying to find Disney Plus for you. Okay. Well, do we want to live stream the ABC News? Let's live stream the ABC News. Yeah. Well, let's come out here in the middle of the paddock. Maybe I don't want to watch the news. No, well, mm. that's another. Let's go ABC News. Live news channel stream? Yeah, let's pop that on. Coming in the shade so I can see it. Uh, oh, there we go. Political party. Uh, they're entitled to vote whatever way they want, but they'll be held to account for it. And any of their rhetoric... Caught up with him not long ago. You did, Jack. <laughs> so, so... Just, farcical if they vote against just show me that again, Jack. Show. Yeah, yeah, so we're... When news, you know, 1438, and we are 1438 on my watch. And, and it's all because of that Meccano set. Look, it's not technically feasible, and this is fake news. It's, it's fake news. Fake news. You can't do it. Yeah, no, we're, we're completely... We found out what the news and live um, yeah, news was going to be, and we recreated the whole set. Yes. Well, that is impressive, Jack. Look, and uh, we fixed it with... Uh, with, a, with an ammunition box. Yes. Like, like other things we fix on the station. So we can officially reopen Pack Horse. Well, Pack Horse is open for business. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to make sure that we are... You know, the live stream for the camera is working, because while we're here, we might as well confirm that. We've got the screen recorder going, and it's reading 14.40 and 45 seconds. So we'll uh, do a picture in picture Hang for on, this. Hang on, Ian, you've got to no, come over in the shade. No, we'll do picture in picture. Oh, so we'll put okay. this video yes. onto here. So okay. we'll time sync it 
Yeah, so you're looking at me talking to the camera. Yes. And I'm just gonna wave. Yes. That might be a little bit hard to, you know, get, so. And how about you jump over here and give us a little dance? <laughs> how about I don't? A couple of, like, star jumps. Okay, I can do you know, some yeah, star okay, jumps. Yeah, we'll, okay, we'll, let's, we've got the screen recorder still going. Okay. So we'll pop you over there and we'll see how we're, we're going. And there's no trickery. There we go. Right. He's, he's done his, he's found his 30 for the day. Yeah. Exhausted. So we've, uh, we've got that picture in picture there for you so you can see what sort of lag we have from here to the homestead to the internet back to here. It's actually cheating a little bit. It's actually going only from so here. So we could have movie nights out here, Jack. Well, it means that when you're camping, you could really be glamping. Yeah. But, you know, while you're here. Yes. And you're enjoying the mosquitoes. Yes. I'll jump in the plane. Yes. Get home. Have a shower. Yep. Have a beer. Yep. Sleep in a nice, comfortable bed away from the insects. Yes. And um, then we could go out the next day and muster. Really, that, that's about it. We've got a magic box that makes something magic happen. All right. All right, hey, Jack. Well, how long did that take? It's not long. 13.39 is when we got into the plane. Wow. So it's been, uh, what, an hour and uh, 15 minutes. And how far, if we had uh, driven, how far or how long would have that taken? Ah, uh, would have taken us just a bit over an hour and a half. Yeah, right. So three hours return trip. Yeah, well. Yeah, so we've gotten out to the job and we've completed it. Yeah. And um, we're... We're only just over an hour deep and we did a little bit of uh, scenic flying and we did a little bit of messing around with our our um, camera and everything. So we are set destination for home, uh, so it means wherever we go we will um, you know, we'll have the arrow telling us how to get there. Beautiful. So you're good for a flight? I am good. Good to go. Alright, let's get some revs on and get airborne. Just like that. some of those bumps out there. Yeah. Then we keep our nose down to get our speed up. Yeah. So that we've got manoeuvre speed up. Yeah. And then we can just climb at our rate of best climb, which is around 50 knots. Sorry, 48 knots is our rate of best climb. So we're just going to punch it up. And there we go. We've got a 1,000 foot per minute gain. Level out to 750, which is around a comfortable... Uh, comfortable climb rate. Yeah, you can really see, uh, especially especially thing is we couldn't we, we wouldn't have been able to do that job today if if you didn't have the plane because um, you know, we tried to get there by vehicle and uh, yeah. And look, a helicopter costs a lot to run, so you get better mobility with a helicopter. Yeah. But the, let's say, the saving of not having to build a landing strip at every water point um, is quickly eaten up by the cost of servicing the helicopter. Yeah. So they fall into a different category and they have to be serviced by a Lamy, um, so aer aeronautical mechanics. and. You, yeah, if you're in a higher class of license, yeah. we don't use the plane for mustering. Uh, so for us, it's a tool for getting to work. You know, it's a it's a land cruiser, but it costs less. It's an air cruiser, Jack. Air cruiser. That's I, I like the sound of that. I do. Too. And, and look, you know, how many flat tires have we got? Um, how how bumpy is the track? Yeah. And. Um, if we had someone driving around the station, uh, you know, at 130 k's an hour, they wouldn't be employed for long. No. So, um, how long before you get your ticket? Uh, yeah. 
Well, you, you ride a motorbike, don't you? I do. Yep, and I can tell you that riding a motorbike is much like flying an aeroplane. Oh yeah, how's that? Well, your rudders. Your rudders like your pegs. Because when you're going to set up and lean into a corner, yeah. you put more weight down on that peg. Yeah. You're doing that with a rudder. Okay. And that's the easy, you know, not thinking about it. A lot of pilots and a lot of um, aviators I know have a lot more trouble explaining how to fly than just flying. Yeah, right. And yeah, that's, it makes sense. But that's where you get absolutely brilliant instructors. And you get instructors that they, they know people and they can read how how they learn. Yeah. Yeah. I've been very fortunate with the, the people that have taught me how to fly. They are extremely experienced and yeah, they've, uh, you know, I've, I've paid for it when I haven't listened to yeah. the advice. Yeah. So, you know, you, you pay for that in uh, blood and stitches. <laughs> yeah.